This is the James Bond of Marvel movies. And it's Roger Moore. One thing's for sure. I'm done running from my past. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and fans of Scarlett Johansson's portrayal of Black Widow certainly had to wait a long time for her to get her own movie. Not only will this already mark the 8th time she has played the character, not only did the character already die in Endgame, but the movie was also delayed for more than a year because of the Covid-19 pandemic. But the wait is finally over this week and people can decide to watch it either in movie theaters or directly on Disney Plus with the premiere access option. Now was it worth the wait? At least for me, I would say yes. It's not in my top tier MCU movies, but I was pleasantly surprised how much I enjoyed it. Part of it is certainly also the feeling of being back in a movie theater. It has been a while, especially for a giant tentpole movie like this. And I felt myself tearing up several times. Not because the movie was that emotional or touching, though it also is at times, but I was simply overwhelmed by the joy of being back at one of my favorite places in the world. And being a MCU movie on top gave me this additional feeling of being back at home again. Black Widow was directed by the Australian filmmaker Kate Shortland and it was written by Eric Pearson after a story by Jack Schaefer and Ned Benson. It is set right after the events of Captain America Civil War, with Natasha being on the run from the authorities. And I like how they were able to kind of slide in this particular story, that it's totally able to stand on its own, is quite big in its own right, but also doesn't need to retcon anything or make you miss other characters. I was very much on board from the get-go and I think this is one of the best openings of any MCU movie. And it also has opening credits, which is a rare exception nowadays and always welcomed in my book. We witness how Natasha's family was torn apart and also learn that her family was anything but normal. Casting has always been a strong suit in the MCU and these new additions are great. Rachel Weisz as her mother Melina, David Harbour as her father Alexei aka the Red Guardian and newcomer Florence Pugh as her sister Yelena are fantastic. And the whole family dynamic is not just a highlight but the heart of the movie. The MCU has its fair share of messed up father figures, from Tony Stark, Thor, Star-Lord to T'Challa and Gamora. Our heroes usually don't have the easiest relationship with their fathers. And both Natasha and Yelena have a rather ambivalent relationship with Alexei. And in the best movies, this father-daughter dynamic, this family theme, is also expanded to the film's overall story and its villain. And though it could have been handled better, it's at least there in Black Widow. And Ray Winstone gives a good performance as the Russian mastermind who is behind the Black Widow program. It's nothing super special and the story is also very much your classical spy stuff, but the proof Marvel formula still works. And this time it is mixed with their take on the mentioned spy genre. Though I was expecting it to be different from what I got. It plays a little bit like a best of Born, Mission Impossible and James Bond. But I was expecting it to be way more born, way grimmer and more grounded than Bond. Or at least more like Daniel Craig Bond. But when Natasha is watching an old Bond movie early on, it's actually Moonraker. Which is of course one of the silliest ones in the whole franchise. And indeed, Black Widow also isn't afraid to become quite wacky and outlandish. The film doesn't intend to be the street level hard edge spy drama. Instead it is this mixture of nice stunt work, real location shootings, but also really big and explosion heavy bombast. And the comedy, which thankfully mostly stems from the character interactions, is never far away. One could say that the tone jumps around quite a bit and that serious situations are always juxtaposed with some silliness. But I would lie if I say that I didn't enjoy this big fun romp quite a bit. Even if it gets a little bit overboard at times and especially in the finale, I thought it to be really entertaining and because it also has this great family dynamic and especially great sister dynamic with a show stealing performance by Florence Pugh, it was totally fine for me. I thought the comedy plays really well and I understand the whole film as a little throwback to older, more goofier spy movies. You definitely have to suspend your disbelief quite a lot and if you ever had a problem with the fact that Natasha Romanoff is basically just a normal human being, just with really great combat skills, you will probably have some issues with the things happening in this film. Because it's more than ludicrous what these characters are able to survive. And the whole Fast and Furious idea of catching and surviving a fall by simply landing on the hood of a car has arrived in the MCU as well. But again, I really enjoyed the different action set pieces. They are exaggerated like hell at times, but they are also really fun. And the movie has enough room to breathe as well, where we just spend time with these characters. 
And though he doesn't have the biggest screen time, David Harbour instantly makes the Red Guardian his own. And it's such a lovely character. The character Taskmaster might not live up to its potential, but again, I saw it more in this Bond tradition as the silent brute muscle of the big snobbish bad guy. And with the mysterious Red Room, though not as mysterious as the one in Twin Peaks, the villain definitely has its very own Bond villain lair. As far as our title character goes, it's not just nice to see Scarlett Johansson one more time in the role, but the movie is also able to add at least a little bit of extra humanity and warmth to her. So in German I'd say, Black Widow ist Marvels Version eines etwas albernen, übertriebenen Retro-Bond-Films. Sicher keine große Filmkunst, aber echt unterhaltsam und mit einem super aufgelegten Cast. I give Black Widow 8 out of 10. It's more like 7.6, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Black Widow. Did you watch it in a movie theater or at home? You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.